welcome back to a new section called stress analysis and this is the final section that will be dealt with uh, for this year um, I have drawn up a shaft here which is 35 millimeters in diameter as you can see here if I keep my cursor there is my 35 millimeters in diameter our extrusion is 350 millimeters in length okay and I'm going to apply a force at the tip of the shaft uh, doing stress analysis on the shaft you go to either environments and you click begin and you'll find stress analysis there or you go back to 3d model you click simulation you find stress analysis under there whichever you choose it's fine right I clicked on it and then we have the stress analysis bar opening on the left hand side side we have manage click on manage and then left click create study the table that pops up here is static analysis that's the one that we will do the other one is for vibration which is modal analysis and we're only going to work with stress analysis in this section with the, which is very short and will give you the most basic understanding of how to use stress analysis um, th this is the settings your tolerances and then your shell connector tolerance these just leave it as standard okay and then further the next thing that you need to do when you enter this you're going to need to assign a material um, this will be mild steel because most of our engineering components are made out of mild steel uh, and sometimes it's treated to give you a more high carbon steel okay I'm going to click on mild steel where the yield strength is about 210 megapascals do you want to design this based on yield strength or ultimate tensile strength yield strength is a much much better choice we've assigned a material we know now this is mild steel that's a frictionless constraint that allows the shaft not to move forward and backward and then you have a pin constraint and fixed means it will just be fixed in both sides Rot rotationally it won't rotate at this point once I fix it and it also won't slide forward and backward so it's more or less a combination of these two so I'm going to click on fixed and I'm going to click on there and this is usually where your bearing will be where it will support your shaft and apply right that's just some extra information just follow what I'm doing on the board and then once you've selected your constraint okay this is basically a simulation of an overhanging shaft you go to loads and there's a couple of loads in here force is where you apply a direct force pressure is when you have an area and you need to apply pressure on as you can see there and then you have bearing once the the shaft goes through a hole you will have the force acting around the bearing this is actually where the shaft is in the middle of the bearing and that's what we simulate and it goes out to the outside I'm not calculating at the bearing I need to calculate the length of the stresses in the shaft hanging out so the next thing is your your moment your moment is basically your torque that you can apply or your bending moment your torque if you rotate about the axis that goes through the center there if you rotate about that axis but if you bend it that's another tip, type of moment Gravity is when you have your G-force acting, the weight of a beam acting on another beam or the weight of an object acting on another object. You can also do it in terms of force or dependent on how large the area is, you can do it in terms of pressure, but that's, how, that's gravity as well. It's a force and I'm applying a force onto the shaft. That's basically a bending force. In other words, the constraint means it's constrained today. It can be in the wall or in the bearing, right? It's moving nowhere and you are bending this down like a cantilever, which will create downward deflection, right? So that force, let's keep put in a value and say we're putting in 10,000 Newton. You can click apply and now you're having that force acting on there, right? That's already a complete situation or scenario where you can start simulating you've got your material 
you got your constraint, you got your load that's acting, and now you can go and solve. Right? This is your mesh to show you the mesh elements within the system. What stress analysis does, it calculates the displacement and the stresses at each node point. So let's go, we've got a mesh there. Don't worry about that, that's something else there. If you need to see if your, uh, your simulation will, will work out, but it's fine. We're going to say solve. Click simulate, left click and say run. Okay, back to the result. Our stress is 0 0.36 megapascal. Okay, this is a voiceover. At this point, when I saw the stress generated by 10 kilonewtons on a 35 millimeter shaft, something came up and I thought to myself that something is wrong because that stress is too, uh, it's too little. The value is too small. So what I did, I went and redraw the whole arrangement as a one millimeter shaft and I only got 11 megapascals. So I found out that there is a problem with the software that you do not usually have with the other versions. Uh, so we're having troubles with this 2020 version of Inventor. However, up till there, I think guys, it is fine. If you uh, listen, uh, you can end the video right here and go listen to my next video that gives you a more clear indication on how to use the software. Uh, thank you very much. As you can see, I'm busy altering the diameters there and testing and retesting, but the stresses does not pick up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. Uh, you can subscribe if you found this video was very informative. Thanks.